Greetings to you. My name is Tara Brabazon and I'm the Dean of Graduate Research at Flinders University and welcome to vlog 85, 10 drafts to submission. This request for a vlog comes from one of our dear friends in the Office of Graduate Research, one of our students at Flinders, Shaney. Shaney is a wonderful citizen of Flinders University and she's very intellectually generous with the Office of Graduate Research and offers us fantastic feedback on all that we do. So Shaney, this one's for you. You're a legend. But it comes from, I think, quite an interesting source. Shaney saw, I think, a photograph of a PowerPoint slide of a keynote I delivered in Scotland last year. And I think that presentation was on how to keep health and happiness intact while completing a PhD. And what was on that slide was my strategy to create a calm, relaxed, predictable mode and method to move a student from their first complete draft through to submission for examination. And that's calmness is part of what we're trying to do here, a calm, predictable process during a point of stress. So what happens is at the moment the student has that first draft, the supervisor and the student exchange that draft 10 times. Both sides read it in its entirety, but as you'll see, each individual draft also has a particular function and purpose as well to keep the process fresh. So let me tell you how I got here to the 10 drafts to submission. In my late 20s, I had my first five PhD completions, which is terrific as a supervisor. And four of those five students finished well under three years. But one student finished in three years, six months. Now, she should have finished in three years too, but something happened. This lass had everything going for her, incredibly bright, first class honours on scholarship. So everything suggests it's going to be a fast completion. And indeed, for two years and nine months, she progressed incredibly well with her PhD. She was doing fantastically. And at two years, nine months, all she had left to produce was her introduction. But then she completely freaked out. It just got all a little bit too much for her. And also her best friend through the degree, can I say, who didn't get first class honours and wasn't on a scholarship, was doing incredibly well, working with great speed. And can I also state the interesting thing is that lass had an intellectual leap during the PhD. You see that in students sometimes where you give somebody a chance who's done okay in their degrees and during the PhD they thrive and they become sort of this incredible intellectual. So what happened was the wonderful student who got first class honours and a scholarship started to feel competitive with her best friend through the degree who hadn't had those advantages. So what happened was she ended up taking nine months to write the introduction. And she kept producing, week after week, a substandard document. We ended up getting something from her, so we ended up getting an introduction. It was not a good one. There was not much I could do as a supervisor. It was so frustrating. And of course, we got it out to examination, and examiners, three examiners at the time. And of course, they recommended minor corrections. They loved the bulk of the thesis, but the minor correction was on the introduction. So this was a clear case and a clear example for me as a supervisor, a young supervisor, where the emotions were getting in the way of producing high quality scholarly work. So from that point on, from that student, I wanted to implement a structure and a strategy to have that momentum in place for students and the supervisor, but also to keep the emotions out, to park the emotions, keep you, the student, busy and functional, and just try to stop you thinking what's going to happen in a year or two years or five and focusing on the now, getting the thesis through. And that became the 10 drafts. Needless to say, that was a completely arbitrary number. But there is no doubt that that is an empowering number for students and for supervisors. We complete 10 drafts in 10 weeks to get it to submission. Remember, we are dealing with very tired students and very tired staff. So that 10 draft structure in 10 weeks provides that light at the end of the tunnel. So just hold on for me for 10 more weeks and then you're done. So it's not gonna, 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 coulda, shoulda. 
into the future. It is 10 drafts, 10 weeks, boom. So each draft involves reading the entire thesis with tracked changes. So the supervisor reads it, puts in tracked changes and comments, sends it back to the students. The student addresses then those queries, reads it again in its entirety, sends it back. That happens 10 times. You'll be amazed how the quality lifts incredibly through those 10 drafts. So besides reading the entire thesis 10 times, we're also looking for different deal breaker corrections in each draft. So for you, this might not be a strategy that's of use to you. But this vlog, I hope, asks you all, wherever you may be in your candidature, to think about what do you want your final two months to look like? What do you want that final bit of your candidature to be? noting that you'll be emotional and you'll be tired. So see if there's anything in this system that may be of value to you. So I'm going to go through quickly those 10 drafting cycles now. What are we doing in each of the drafts to get you to submission? And we've got a prop. We'll see if the prop is stable. I'm excited by props. And also this vlog has given me an excuse to buy a new bit of stationery. And I'm very excited by that shiny you rock. However, it may not be functional. Let's see how we go. So draft one evaluate the structure. Now this is the deal breaker draft. The first few drafts are all deal breaker drafts. You get this wrong, you're not going to pass the PhD. Boom. So this is the first edit to assess if your structure is working. Does each chapter lead to the next? Does your argument hold together? Remember now, when we're writing PhDs, it's not like 20 or 30 years ago, even 10 years ago, when there was a template. The diversity of structures that I see in PhDs that I'm examining and supervising at the moment, it's incredibly exciting. So don't think that there is a predictable or standard structure for a PhD, because there certainly is not. But this is your most important edit because I need your form to follow your structure, I need your form to follow the function of the thesis, but I also want your structure to follow the argument. So pick a structure and make sure the structure of your PhD is enabling your argument to be presented well. Draft two, I've got to remember to do this, draft two. Is it working? Draft two, assess the thesis structure and particularly assess the thesis statement in line of that structure. So thesis statement. Is the argument consistent and consistently signposted throughout your document? So this is another deal breaker correction here. Assess your thesis statement in some disciplines. Look at your research questions, okay? So make sure they're cool. Assess your thesis statement, assess your research questions, but then I want you to go further. I need you to make sure that every single chapter resonates and talks with that thesis statement and those research questions. So this is the point where you start to create that looping between your research questions and your thesis statements and each chapter. I want each chapter to point back and demonstrate to the examiner how, how you are answering those questions. So make sure those links are overt and those links are in place. Draft three. It's very exciting. Yeah. Oh wow, this is so important. Examine the abstract, the introduction, and the conclusion. So do they frame the argument? Do they fit together? Now this draft, again, this is a deal breaker draft. You get this wrong, you fail a PhD, that's it. So what it does is it looks at your research frame. Does your abstract work? I cannot tell you how important an abstract is to your examiner. It's the first or the second part of your thesis that they read. And if you can write a really great, crunchy, exciting, clear abstract, you relax the examiner. And trust me, you want a relaxed examiner. So get the abstract right. But it goes a bit further than that. I want you to look at the abstract in relation and in isolation with actually the introduction and the conclusion. So after you've read the whole thesis through for this particular draft, just read the abstract, the intro, the conclusion and see if they dance together and they dance together well because they should fit together 
like Lego. So make sure that's the case. And they hang together. Cool. Draft four. This is so exciting. Draft four. Okay. Ah, another deal breaker. Right. Read your references and your bibliography. So most examiners start reading your PhD at the back of the document. We read your references first. We read your bibliography first, so what are the, the first impressions that you get from reading that bibliography or their ref, that reference list? Are there wider problems that are being manifested through that bibliography? So we are still in deal breaker land here. References and bibliographies are crucial. And when I examine, I think I've examined 45, 50 PhDs this year. Of course, I've also seen the ones that Steve's examined in the house. So we have a lot of PhDs in the house. And when I examine, I spend two full days assessing the references and the bibliography, two full days. Remember that just about all examiners start reading at the back. So I look at that and I know if you're gonna pass or fail on the basis of the bibliography or the reference list. And uh, one day we might almost put a camera in my face as I'm doing my first read of the bibliography or reference list. Because when I'm doing it and there's something wrong, I'm going, oh no, oh no. Because I know if a student's gonna fail from the bibliography. So that's why you must get it right. Draft five. Oh, this is the lovely one. Draft five. Determine the weakest area of the thesis. So everyone will be different, everyone will be bespoke, but I want you to fool me, I knew it was gonna fall. Let's see how we go, can I hold it, can I hold it, can I hold it? Yes, magic, sort of. Uh, right, so what I need you to do is assess the weakest part of your PhD, and it will differ. So for some students, probably most, you'll have a weak chapter. So one chapter that's not quite working, that is a step below others. There could be a weakness in the bibliography. You could have dated references that when you read it, you go, wow, that's seriously dated. You also could have a pretty poor concept or theory. I've seen that too. So anything involving post-structuralism makes me weep uncontrollably because people that are using the word post-structuralism these days have no idea what they're talking about. So if you've got a concept like that, really make sure you do know what you're talking about because the examiners certainly do. Okay, so this is the key moment in these 10 drafts. If this correction is well made, so you're removing the weakest part of the thesis, if it's well made, you have a fighting chance of passing this PhD. This is the moving to the pass correction here. So you need to assess, yes, the entirety of the thesis and locate what is the weakest component. It is most frequently the dodgy chapter. So one chapter that's just a bit yucky, a bit yeah, and, and weak. And so that will pull the whole quality of the thesis down. So focus very strongly on lifting the standard of that chapter. Dated references is another. If I see a lot of dated references, I go, well, how is this an original contribution to knowledge when the knowledge they're summoning is from 10 years ago? Hello. So we start to get to the last few drafts at this point. From this point, we're now moving from major corrections to minor corrections and an A. But from this draft, we're now over the line. So let's go to draft six. Ah, it's holding, that's fantastic. Draft six, highlight the original contribution to knowledge throughout the doctorate. At this point, draft six, we are selling your research. We are promoting how fabulous you are. So I need you to sell your originality. This is significant because the difference between a master's and a PhD is really clear. A master's synthesizes knowledge. A PhD is original contributions to knowledge, right? So if a, an examiner has any doubt that there's originality here, that's when you start to see that very unfortunate grading in a PhD, rare, but it does happen, where the examiner goes, you know what, there's not originality here, it's a master's. Okay, so the tactic and the strategy by and the way in which you've stopped that correction coming through is to put the phrase, my original contribution to knowledge is, 
in your abstract, <laughs> in your introduction, in your conclusion, and talk about it in every single chapter. So explain how this chapter aligns and develops your original contribution to knowledge. So what I want you to do is really, 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 really make sure that you are demonstrating an original contribution to knowledge. So make sure it's all the way through that you're making the case for originality. Don't assume the case. Draft seven. Yes. Attention to, we run. We certainly are. Attention to spelling and grammar. Now, this is crucial. Whatever your discipline, and I seriously mean this, whatever your discipline, hard sciences, high humanities, your credibility is carried by your writing. If your writing is clumsy, and it's ill-drafted, and it has spelling errors in it, it has grammatical errors in it, your credibility is shot. Think about it from the examiner's perspective. We're giving you four days of our life, four days of our life at least, and you haven't even bothered to put a spelling checker through the draft. How do you think you would feel as an examiner? Remember, you're trying to make the examiner feel happy, calm and relaxed. When I see spelling errors, I want to kill somebody. I want to kill somebody. So you don't need the examiner sort of eh, 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 like homicidal, okay? You need us relaxed and calm, so therefore don't let us trip over any spelling errors. Make sure the silly stuff is not there, because if we see spelling errors and grammatical errors in a PhD, we think the thesis has been rushed, and it might be a proxy for deeper issues. Sometimes it's not, but you don't want that thought in an examiner's mind. Draft eight. Oh yeah, focus on paragraphic. One of my favourite topics. So the best of writing, as I always say, is like a waterfall. It flows. You can't see where it begins or where it ends. It is graceful. It is beautiful. It's evocative. So the eighth draft that I do with my students is to assess that movement between paragraphs. I look at topic sentences in particular. Andrew, I'm destroying your life at the moment looking at topic sentences. But what I'm trying to do with topic sentences and the last sentence of each paragraph is make sure that there's a good and clean transition between paragraphs. Because yes, that's about form and writing, but it's also about enhancing your argument so it is rendered logical. Draft nine. Uh, monitor the engagement with quotations and references. So I particularly want you to look at the prose around your quotations, or if your particular discipline doesn't use quotations, the prose around your Harvard references. Now for an examiner, I really start to worry if I see references sort of um thrown in. What makes me crazy, and it does make me crazy, crazy for first year students, when I see it in a PhD, I lose the will to live. When I see a Harvard referenced reference just sort of plonked at the end of a paragraph, so the paragraph there's bang, there's a bracket, and I'm going, well, how is that bracket? How has that Harvard reference actually been used in the preceding paragraph? Hashtag no clue. So if you don't use quotes, that's fine. Some disciplines don't, that's cool. Do make sure though that your paraphrasing is paraphrasing and it's not plagiarism. Really, really important. Remember, I look at four or five Turnitin reports every single day in all disciplines, all disciplines, and what I see sometimes just completely, you know, freaks me out because we're seeing students that are supposedly paraphrasing an idea where actually Turnitin has picked it up as a direct lift. So please be very, very conscious. If you are paraphrasing, make it a paraphrase and please check it. So if you are in a discipline that does quote, then I have a rule. For every sentence of quotation, I require three from you. So a one to three ratio. But also if your discipline is paraphrasing with those Harvard brackets, please make sure there is interpretation there. So don't just sort of rip or synthesize other people. That's a master's degree. I need to see original interpretation. That is a PhD. And yes, we're there. Draft 10. The examination draft. 
That is, we read every single sentence with a ruler. So this one is done on paper most frequently. It's done on paper and I get students to read with a ruler underneath each line to make sure every single error is picked up. This now at this point, if we get this draft right, you get, get through as an A, as without any corrections at all. So as a supervisor, I conduct draft 10 as an examiner. So I pretend I'm no longer your supervisor, I am much, much harder, and yes, I am an examiner. So this is the final check for me to make sure that this thesis is going to get through. There's nothing weird going on, it will be passed. So I do make sure that the student reads that final draft with a ruler, it takes a long time, it takes many hours, and they go through and find every single error. The reason why, by the way, the final draft is on paper, and often with a ruler or something like that, is I'm trying to defamiliarize your relationship with that thesis and mine. You've just read it 10 times, so your eyes tend to gloss over errors with the final or analog read, it's very difficult to miss those types of errors. So if you go through these 10 drafts and focus on each of the functions that we've discussed today, it has many advantages. Your thesis lifts in quality incredibly quickly, but it also manages your stress because it puts you in control. Every doctoral candidate will have a few days through their PhD candidature where you'll just think, I don't want to do this, I don't like this, I just, I just can't do it anymore, and you lose the momentum. But our job as supervisors is to keep you moving, keep you thinking, keep you reading, keep you writing. And these 10 drafts can provide a stable structure of support for you, in particularly these challenging final weeks. It is hard yakker on you, the student. It's also incredibly hard yakker on the supervisor as well. And I've certainly had weeks this year, because I think I had, well, I'll have by the end of the year, 10 students that have submitted this year. So it's been a pretty tough year. But I had a period where four students were submitting at the same time. So I was reading 400,000 words a week, every week for 10 weeks. So it's pretty hard. Yeah, girl, the supervisor too. It is tough, but it is important. And yes, this works. People often say to me, how do I get students through in three years? How do I get them through feeling pretty good at the end? This is a concrete strategy, a concrete way that I do that. So, Sinead, thank you as always for your wonderful question. It was a good one. and I know you're just about to finish. There may be something that is useful here for you. And as always, and it held up. Yay! As always, I wish you love, light and peace. Tia.